it's been almost half hour ever since this game have just finished and I don't think it has sunk in yet in terms of what in the world did I just saw in this game between the San Jose Earthquakes and the Vancouver Whitecaps and that I think the only way I can simply say, say about this game is that I am so relieved the fact that the Quakes got the three points in the end and at the same time this is easily one of the most frustrating but at the same time one of the most joyful game I have ever seen the Quakes done done in my life watching this team. Now in the first half just seven minutes into this game Ali Atnan scored from Inbon Kwan to give the Whitecaps a 1-0 lead and you know the funny thing about that goal is that just literally two minutes before we concede the first goal I just had a feeling we were going to concede an early one because it seemed like this is a tradition in the third wheel derby where for whatever reason, we have to concede an early goal against the Whitecaps. And Lord and behold, we did it again for the third time in this third wheel derby. And really, this was an example of some of the most shocking defense that thing I have seen that the Quakes done done ever in a game. And, and I'm going to even highlight some of even more embarrassing kind of defensive mistake that they made throughout this game. But this defensive mistake was because of Cassia just completely caught wrong footed I mean it was a good turn from Atnan and even a better finish but Cassia I mean I said it in the beginning he is a liability in our defense and what did I tell you just as soon as I said that in the beginning of the game he basically completely proved me right that he's a liability and it is very hard to try to prove me right in terms of of something that I I basically just said said on Twitter but you know, Cashier did exactly that, and definitely I'm not proud that he, of course, did that. Now, in the eighth minute, Creepo robbed Jackson Yu a chance to equalize. This was very similar to what happened last year, I believe, in that away game against the Whitecaps, where we can see the goal very early, but straight away we were able to equalize. But Creepo did a good job to, to keep that one out. In fact, I think when you look at this whole game, this game I feel like looked very carbon copy to what happened last year when the Quakes put a record amount of shots which was 43 to, to the Whitecaps and forced Crapo to make 60 saves because the 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 Quakes were just putting a fire, firing squad in front of Crapo and you know Crapo even though he conceded four goals in this game if he wasn't in in the same form that he had back in that August game this game could have easily been maybe five or six, six free that the Whitecaps lost this one, and that he did a very good job tried to hold, hold on to, to the lead that the Whitecaps had for majority of the game as long as possible. But obviously, the Whitecaps, the reason why they kind of had those lead was because some, some very bad defensive mistake, and this one. One was no different in the 23rd minute when Jutsun, of course, scored an own goal. Actually, this wasn't really a defensive mistake, but this was just some brain dead kind of kind of corner corner kick mistake. Like I've been screaming for the past couple of years, whenever the Quakes decide to take a corner, why in the world do they not just simply deliver in the ball? Why do they have to do these kind of trickery play? And the fact fact that when I saw on the replay where everybody basically commit forward and that there was no one back. I'm even shocked the fact that why would they decided to try to take it short and trying to to work it in the back because you know if you lose the ball you are screwed in terms of nobody nobody is is at the back and that they would just go on a lightning counter attack and believe it or not that is exactly what happened we gave the ball away they went on this lightning counter attack uh they actually almost screw screwed it up in terms of this lightning counter attack when Jordy Reyna was trying to play it back but Jutsen, who was trying to prevent that from going in, unfortunately hits it into the back of the net. And just like that, it was 2-0 against the Vancouver Whitecaps. And again, the defending and the attack has been an absolute joke from the Quakes. Like the attack, even though they scored four goals in this game, I thought in the first half, one of the things that frustrated me a lot about the attack, and this has been a thing that I've been seeing with the Quakes for the past couple of seasons. Whenever they go on the attack, they're either too slow or kind of out of that ideas once they get into the final third. Or players, when they are in a good position to potentially shoot and put the ball in the back of the net, they hesitate, they allow defenders to try, 
to to get back into the position to block and that is the reason why we aren't able to score a lot of goals like don't let the 31 shots that we had in this game distract you the fact that there was a lot of them that was blocked because of of the hesitation that we had on the attack and also don't let it distract you the fact that some of the finishing was absolutely dreadful from the quakes now in the 41st minute uh Vesen Vic almost score an own goal and this was almost a com calamity of a goal like calamity i think is a, a good way to describe this game because this game in some way was kind of a little bit of a shit show as as well as how how good this one is when i think one of the defender i think it was Kimiri, that was trying to head it in but unfortunately he bounced it right right into vicinovich face and that was almost an own own goal when he, when that one actually ricochet off of vicinovich face but fortunately Craig Paul was in a perfect position to of course get that and the Whitecaps I thought they were definitely living on the edge by allowing, uh, allowing a lot of pressure like I understand what the Whitecaps was trying to do which was trying to counter attack and sit deep but there was also time that I feel like they kind of sit a little bit too deep and they were just letting the Quakes having all kinds kinds of, of chances to basically pick a pass going for on the attack and potentially Create something now right on the stroke of halftime Rios was able to score from Espinoza and Erickson and I basically wrote see what happened when you put the ball in in the box from the corner because I think that was like our 10th corner of this game we had a ton of corners in this game and that was one of the few time we actually put the ball into the box and we didn't do those kind of trickery kind of play and just kind of play it around and look what happened we actually put the ball into the back of the net so at that point, it was a 2-1 lead in favor of the Whitecaps. And then heading into the second half, I was really hoping that we were going to start making some changes in terms of trying to, to kind of change up in terms of the defense on the attack because both the defense and the attack looked very bad in the first half. But we didn't do, do that at all. And as a result of that, we can see another goal. And this goal was really a goalkeeping howler from... Vega, as he basically just gave this ball right to Milikovic, he plays back to Dejomi, who, who able to slot in home for his first ever goal in in his MLS career. And just like that, it was a 3-1 lead for the Vancouver Whitecaps. And up until that point, I, I thought I, I was getting close to give up watching this game because th this was just, just some of the worst kind of defensive mi mistake that I've ever seen from the Quakes. And I... I think at that point I was also kind of ready to talk about how throughout this game the only what hurts this game even more than compared to that Minnesota game and that compared to the level of embarrassment that we suffer in this one was because we basically gift them their goal like we were basically like Santa Claus in this game just gift them present and that that the, they shouldn't be free one up right now if they if they of course of course didn't get those present and didn't just just give them those gifts that we gave them in the game at up until that point so yeah uh we were they they were up 3-1 at that point and i also wrote i have seen u9 team defend and goalkeeping better than what the quakes have did today this this was just basically out of rage with the, the way that you know it just it was so painful seeing how the team defend in this game that it seemed like every time when the white caps go on the attack I was already kind of shitting my pants knowing the fact that let's see how which kind of way are we going to to concede are we going to have a goalkeeping howler or is somebody forget to mark a man in the back post and they were able to head it from a free header now in the 72nd minute Wando of course scores a goal to make this a free two game and actually I didn't write this on the board but right between I think around the 60 minute mark and after we went down 3-1 uh, Almeida basically made a wholesale change like he basically made four changes in this game and I thought the changes re really helped and that it definitely reignites some spark into to this team and Lauren Bajal actually one of the substitute Wando was was the one that actually came came on during that four changes that we made and he actually she scored a goal at that point to make it at a free two game and you know even though though the game was at free two i was still kind of skeptical of the fact that the quakes was going to come back in fact i actually didn't even celebrate this goal like i just saw that i'm like okay sure 
that's a good goal. But, you know, I know for a fact that we're going to still screw. We're still not going to get anything out of this game because we're going to make that defensive mistake at the back and stuff like that. Now, in the 76th minute, uh, Houston had a chance to to strike a free kick to potentially tie the game up. But Crepo, who, as I said, throughout this game, he really stood on his head. And if it wasn't for him, this game probably wouldn't wouldn't be like a 4-3 win for the Quakes and that the Quakes probably would have scored at least five or six goal in this game. He made a good save on Houston's free kick. And then in the 81st minute, Aliness would tie the game up from Ericsson. Another great delivery, that this one into the box, which Aliness was able to put it away and actually out jump his defender. And at that point, it was free free. And if you're a neutral watching this game, you must be ecstatic of the way that you're watching this game. In fact, if you're a neutral watching this game, it's going to be really hard to say that this this is not actually one of the best game you have seen this this tournament and that you could even maybe say that this is the best game we have seen so far in the tournament with how much drama and how much just calamity that actually happened in this game and yet there was some just amazing play that we saw throughout this game too now after Alianas got that equalizer to tie the game up at three apiece the Quakes was really pushing for that winning goal you know I did kind of celebrate a little bit with the Alianas goals I was basically like okay we got the equalizer now can we please get that crucial fourth goal to finally get the crucial three points that we desperately need heading in to 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 the next or heading into to after this game of course it's over and heading into that game against Chicago in the last game of our group stage um and as the Quakes of course was was pushing for that winning goal I thought Vancouver really looked like they they were absolute gas and this is the thing about about it well you know when a team hasn't played for that long of a period and that you know, I kind of had a feeling Vancouver was going to eventually run out of gas with, with the way how crazy this game was going, just non-stop pace. And that it looked like they were just hanging on for dear life and hope that they can get, get out of a out of this game with a free, free draw. And as the game continued to wind down, I kind of started to lose some faith in terms of them potentially get the equalizer. Or, not the equalizer, but the winning goal. But... If there's one thing that, you know, I probably haven't learned from the Quakes besides the fact that sometimes they let me down, is that sometimes they could also do some magical moment and find that Goonies magic that they used to have back in the old, old 2015 and the 2014 and even 2013 and 2012 days. Because that Goonies magic happened again and it happened to none other than... Then Salinas, of course, scoring the goal. The guy that basically scored the, the winning goal to to basically complete a, a great comeback against the Galaxy a couple of years ago. And the guy that actually scored the tying goal back back in that 2013 Cali Clasco that we end up scoring two stoppage time goal to win, win that game. I mean, it just had to be, be him. It can't be anybody except for Salinas, who is really just kind of like part of that that Goonies magic kind of gang that that is is part of this team and with his goal that he of course scored that of course make the game to 4-3 and that you know besides the fact that I also was absolutely ecstatic after this goal was score and that I actually had to change color in terms of of writing this goal down because I actually smack my my black marker so hard to the ground that you know since I was ex celebrating so much like that that it just didn't work after after I decided to pick it up and write down the goal that Selena's of course scores so that's why I used my purple marker and yeah there you have it that is pretty much it the final score and that is pretty much uh, how I try my best to explain like, how this game of course gone like yeah I mean this was just like I, I was absolutely sweating after this game is over and I I, I was kind of in some way kind of a little bit shocked of what I've just seen the Quakes done in this game and that you know all I will say is as I said in the beginning I'm relieved the fact that we get three points in this game but at the same time I hope they don't do this ever again and that if we play like this against Chicago or play like this against any other team in this tournament there is no way we are going to be coming back 
in this game and that it's not every day you're going to face a Vancouver Whitecaps defense that clearly they they were missing a lot of quality in in this game and that they clearly missed some of those attacking pieces that if they had that those attacking pieces I think the Whitecaps could have e easily score a couple of more goals at uh, on top of some of the goals that we of course give that to them throughout this game but in terms of the shots in this game 31 shots compared to seven that the the Whitecaps had 11 shots on goal compared to two that the Whitecaps had eight shots off target compared to three that the Whitecaps had 12 shots that was blocked compared to two that the Whitecaps had and possession wise 32% possession compared to 68% position that the Whitecaps had as the Quakes are now just one step closer potentially locking their spot to the next round. They haven't actually locked their spot yet because, you know, it's going to depend on how Seattle, of course, play in the final game. And also, since this is the Whitecaps' first match, it'll be interesting to see how they, of course, would do against the Sounders in that game and that it could really determine whether or not if the Quakes are going to move on into the next round. Actually, now that I, I think about it, I do remember that the Quakes do play Chicago before that Sounders versus Whitecaps game is going to happen. So maybe when we do play against Chicago and if we can get something out of that game, that could maybe determine we could whether or not we are going to be moving on into the next round. And then we don't have to wait for that the Seattle versus Vancouver game. Or at the worst case scenario, wait for that Vancouver versus Chicago game later in the group stage to really find out whether or not if we did enough to move on into the next round but either way there you have it that is pretty much it for this this review that that i did and i try my best to keep my composure throughout this review i kind of lost it a little bit right at the end because I, I knew i was about to talk about the most ecstatic moment of this game but let me know in the comments below what do you think of that game and you know if you're a quakes fan you can now breathe now now, in terms of what you saw in this game, and that if you're a Whitecaps fan, my sincere condolence definitely tore you. They were so close of potentially getting some crucial points in this game, but fortunately they just felt short in the end. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I, of course, will see you guys next time.